All right, so here we are with module nine, and we want to look at how to calculate probabilities, confidence intervals, and a hypothesis test for a sampling distribution of the sample means, right? So our first question here says, 20-year-old men's weights have a population mean of 155 and a population standard deviation of 22. Um, the distribution is skewed to the right. And suppose we take a random sample of 100 20-year-old men's weights. We want to calculate the probability that the sample mean will be greater than 156.2 pounds. All right, so 155, that's my mu because it's the population mean. And population standard deviation is sigma, and that's going to be 22. Okay. So the distribution is referring to the population distribution. So that's right skew. So we have to check the central limit theorem. And this video is about using stat crunch. So um, all conditions have been met. We're not going to check conditions um, for the purpose of this video. But of course, you know, you need to check your conditions. All right. So we have a random sample of 100 20-year-old men's weights. So my sample size is 100. So let's calculate that probability that we would, uh, that our sample mean, you see that sample mean, calculating the probability of the sample mean, that lets you know that that's X bar. And the only type of distributions that we have of X bar are sampling distributions. So that's one of the hints that lets you know, hey, this is one of those problems I need to be checking my central limit theorem to make sure my conditions have been met. Okay, so we will go stat. We're going to go to our calculator. And once conditions have been met, you've proven it's a normal distribution. You have your population mean. Now, remember, once you convert to standard or sampling distribution, we have to convert this value to standard error. Okay, so that's going to be key, convert. So in my sampling distribution, I need standard error, okay? So my sigma is 22 and my sample size is 100. So that's 22 divided by the square root of 10. I mean, square root of 100, which is 10. So that'll give us 2.2 for our standard error. Be careful about that. Do not plug in sigma. You don't want the distribution of a sampling. You, you don't want to find the probability of a pop. Let me get it together. You don't want to find the probability of a population distribution. We're trying to find the probability of the sampling distribution. So we have to convert to standard error. So we plug in our standard error. We are interested in the probability that is greater than 157.2 and compute, All right? So there you go. That's how you would use StatCrunch to calculate probabilities of a sampling distribution of the sample means. All right, so now, so it's the same place that you calculate it for proportions and, and population distributions as well. Let's go to a sampling distribution, I'm sorry, Ah, yeah. I'm having a little bit of difficulties today. Just ignore me. All right, my mind is just going a little bit faster than, than everything else. Confidence intervals, let's calculate a confidence interval. Okay, or again, we're dealing with sample means, a sampling distribution for sample means. So 45 randomly selected college students worked on homework for an average of nine hours per week. Their standard deviation was two hours. Find a 90% confidence interval for the population mean. Okay, so check conditions, of course. All conditions have been met. So then you go stat, T stats. We're in a T distribution. We only have one sample. And I gave you the statistics of that sample. All right. I gave you that the average college students out of the 45 was nine hours a week of study time. OK, so we want to choose with summary. OK, so you enter your sample mean. All right. So that sample mean X bar was nine. That's the mean of our sample. 
we enter our sample standard deviation, it says that there, there, the 45 randomly selected college students. So that's our sample standard deviation, that's two. And then you enter your sample size. We have 45 students in our sample. We want to select a confidence interval. It says find a 90% confidence interval. So let's convert that to a decimal point nine. You always wanna show the critical value just in case you're being asked to calculate margin of error and compute, right? So we would conclude that we are 90% confident that college students, all college students, remember it's always about the population, that all college students study between eight and a half and nine and a half hours. Oh, I'm sorry, worked on their homework uh, between eight and a half and nine and a half hours. We're 90% confident that, that that's where our population mean would lie, okay? What if you're given data, right? So this time we have some recovery times for the newest flu virus. These are the data values of how long it take it took those to recover. Let me make that a little bit larger so you can see it. All right, so I already entered that data over here. So I don't even know why I just made it larger. Okay, so we're gonna find a 95% confidence interval for the population mean recovery time. We're trying to figure out what's the average recovery time for everyone in the population. So conditions have been met, so we'll move on. Once again, stat, Z, T stats. We only have one sample in this case. And this time it's with data. I gave you the data. So we're gonna select where our data was. We're gonna come down. Confidence interval, we want a 95% interval as it requests. Once again, you want to show your critical value and compute. So we are 95% confident that the average time that it takes for people to recover from the flu is between about six and a half to 10 days. Okay, so now lower and upper limits. Right. So that's how you would use with data, whether it's hypothesis tests or confidence intervals. All right. So let's do one last example for hypothesis testing. So in 2010, the mean years of experience among nursing staff was 14.3 years. A nurse manager took a survey of a random sample of 35 nurses at the hospital, found the sample mean of 18.37 years with a standard deviation of 11.12. Do we have evidence that the mean years of experience among the nursing staff at the hospital has increased using a level of 5%? So therefore, what we're going to do is state our check conditions, of course. <laughs> And then state your hypothesis. All conditions have been met. So my hypothesis would say, it says the mean years of experience among nursing staff was 14.3. So that's what we were given. That's our no, right? And we're trying to determine, do we have evidence that the years among the nursing staff has increased? So my alternative hypothesis would say, U is greater than the 14.3, right? So now at this step, I go over to stat crunch. I go stat, T stats again. Only have one sample. And I have summary. I don't have data for this problem. So I'm going to select summary. All right. Enter your sample mean. Okay. Well, what does it say? It says the sample mean is 18.37. It says our sample standard deviation is 11.12. And then our sample size, we had. 35 nurses, all right, we enter our mu naught, which is the 14.3, we want greater than 14.3, and then at this point, we can go ahead and compute, all right, there's your T statistic, and here's your p-value, so with a p-value of about 0.02, what are we going to do? Our significance level is 5%. 
My p-value is less than my alpha. Therefore, I am going to reject the null hypothesis and say that we do not have enough evidence that the mean years of experience has increased. And I said that completely wrong. <laughs> I'm so sorry. We are rejecting the null hypothesis because the p-value is less than alpha. So therefore, we have enough evidence that the mean years of experience among the nursing staff has increased because we are rejecting the null and we have enough evidence to support our alternative hypothesis. All right, so you all forgive me. I am not re-recording this with all the mistakes I made. Hey, I'm human too, so I'm sure you guys can understand that. Um, so if you have any questions about using StatCrunch, you know where to reach me during office hours or Zoom office hours um, or reach out to the great tutors over in the Learning Commons. All right, y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.